suppose it was about, oh, six years ago, I got a curious email one day. And I was absolutely charmed. Here was a sculptor on the other side of the world that had just seen me, uh, I think uh, read a, a published book about me, but there was my website, and in my website is my email. And this sculptor was just reaching out across the global network nervous system of the earth to just talk to another artist. And it was absolutely wonderful. So I wrote uh, back uh, to her, and our communication is, it was in a, a somewhat uh, fractured English grammar. Her, her English wasn't perfect, but the meaning was so very clear. Everything she said was very, very clear. And I began to communicate back and forth to her about art, um, about the larger picture of why we make art, about life, about many things. And this dialogue continued and continued for almost a year until I, I just had to go to China to, <laughs> to meet her. And uh, uh, the rest, I guess, as they say, is history. I have never met anyone remotely close to Aichu. She grew up in a way uh, that's very different from most of us. A uh, very free, sort of an art child, playing in nature. And, uh, but always, from the beginning, when I hear the way she grew up, I think that this girl was born with an incredible self-direction, uh, a, a determination. She's the most self-determined person I know. And I don't know where that comes from. Some people just have a sense of uh, destiny. They were born to be and to do something. And everything in their life becomes a step towards these goals. All these things are here, they're available for everybody, but some people recognize them directly. Aichu has a, an instinct to make art, beautiful, expressive art. I don't know, something in, in her power of empathy for the world makes that an absolute necessity. I love art and how the make possibility that I can study art because he wants me to fulfill my dream as a child to, you know, be artist. So I, I really love art and I, um, one day I just get up. I think if today I bicycle through the town, if I can find my teacher, I will study art. But if I cannot, then we became difficult. I have to go to uh, find college to find a teacher and it take a lot of money and effort. And that day was the sunshine and everything is wonderful, birds chirping. I feel that it's a good sign, but somehow it's something mysterious energy inside me that I believe I may can find my teacher. So I bicycle through the little town and I happen to see a red letter, you know, right in Chinese ink. It's a post, a post about um, he want to find some students for the summer class. So I just go to find him and uh, the second day he said that I'm not going to have the class because it's not enough people and the classroom is expensive to rent. So I was sad, I said, I thought you're going to change my fate. 
because I think this is the only possibility I can start art from local artists uh, instead of spending a lot of money, go to college, find a professor. And then he said, you know, if you are so, you know, in love with art, I can just teach you uh, for free. And I said, how wonderful. Then that is the incredible beginning uh, for my art career, to be a student. And uh, it took me two years, something, and I uh, be select uh, in the Shanghai Normal University. That is only eight students be selected through nation. So I was very lucky to get a third scholarship and uh, have the ability to study in the college. I got an email from a, 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 a professional concert violinist who was absolutely enraptured by I choose uh, violin. He's a Russian man, and uh, he said, tell me, please, is your wife is a, is a musician, no? He said, because I've never seen a sculptor ever capture so much the feeling of the way you hold the violin, the way you caress it, the way you make music come out of it. It's, artists are artists and musicians are musicians. I've never seen a crossover. <laughs> no, she's never held a violin before, you know, but I'm sure she just looks and understands this. And that's the, the magic of that empathy she has. Because artists uh, usually not have stable income in China, so when I decided to choose to be an artist, uh, and uh, I was really surprised that my father, he indeed um, supported me very much. He was happy that uh, he was like a child. It's like, wow, you want to be an artist, uh, you know? I really admire artists, uh, and uh, he thought, that is an incredible way to, you know, to, to express life instead of every day just catch fish and sell fish all the matters about the money and the survive. So he think that is incredible to have this ability to just do art and he wants to support me for that. When I too looks at anything, uh she feels it completely inside her. She's an incredible mimic and dancer. Uh, when she imitates a little deer or a fish for the children and does a little dance, I've never seen anybody connect so completely. It's as if she becomes a deer or becomes a fish swimming. Every fiber of her being understands instinctively the movement the posture the everything and this is the same energy that comes out in her sculpture when i was seven years old my father was a beekeeper that was so incredible life experience for all of us even now when my mom my dad and all of us talk about those time and uh, we just can feel this very sweet warmth that went through all of us when we talk about those beautiful times. Uh, when you are so close to the nature, you really listen to yourself. You become a child again. You will not yet uh, care about the material world. And uh, I feel like those part of a life experience is so much part of me how can make me an artist that can just listen to myself, listen to my heart. I get up in the morning, every day is just incredible, gorgeous nature unfolding in front of me. And uh, I will open up my eyes and I look up, it's floating blossoms just fall upon me and carries my cheek and rest on my uh, pillow. 
and then I look aside when I see those petals and then I see the mist of the honey tea rise up and this is a new place a new beautiful blossom season new location you know and this is how I begin my day and I look at my parents where are they and I see they are back they are back sitting they sitting on mountain and I see they holding their hands and uh, I know that is beautiful peaceful as if we are a part of nature I was just a so happy little girl and this little girl is just live in this beautiful nature and dance with bees in the character of A. You know, bees dance is like like this character of A in the air. And I feel I want to dance with them, then I just dance with the bees in the character of A. And then we dance near the stream, and I will just take some mud, make little figures. And my parents will say, who are you making? And I will say, I'm making you, Mama, and I'm making you, Daddy. And I will sing a song like, uh, the string is running. The song is like this. I will say, Chan shui ding dong, Chan shui ding dong, Chan shui ding dong xiang. Liu dao san po, liu dao san jiao, liu dao wa sen bian. Chan shui ya chan shui, ni dao na li, ni dao na li qi. It's like, stream, please, and anyway, I invite you to come to my home. And it's just beautiful time we had. That is so much part of me. And I think this other child is still live inside me. When I was seven years old, I said, uh, I'm going to find my husband this way, Mama. Don't arrange marriage for me. I will write a letter to him and he will write a letter to me. But actually, I didn't escape this condition. I didn't escape this chain of a condition. They did arrange the marriage for me. And uh, one day, it's like this. My father carry um, a lot of uh, food. It's like meat and uh, all kind of fruit. We never see so many things. We never had chance to eat all kind of fruits or meat. Usually just super or rice and some vegetable from our own backyard garden. And the meat is like very real. You have one or two or three pieces in the soup. But the other morning my father is like have so much, you know, incredible. It's like a festival. I say, hi, hey, Father, how wonderful. Here is a banana, wow. And I just eat a banana. And uh, I say, Father, why you get these things? It costs a lot of money. My father said, you are engaged. I'll find a husband for you. I already find the one. I say, what? And I cannot swallow. I cannot swallow that banana. I say, no, it cannot happen this way. I must find my husband by myself. It's not you. It's my life. It's my husband. And my mom said, honey, we already, already had their, you know, engagement paper and uh, this gift. And uh, it just it. you are a good girl. I said, this is not about a good girl or bad girl. This is my life, mom. This is about uh, my freedom of choosing my life. It's, it's not about uh, being nice or not. And this battle, fighting about this arranged marriage is over five years. I was 14 years old when this uh, festival food and the sudden event happened, you know. Take me five years to fight. Then during that five years, I never really can speak to my parents. 
I cannot look at their eyes. I was horrified, and I feel that my wish, my win, and、uh, my freedom is totally be cut off like a bird's. And I think the freedom of choose what you want to be is a breath for your life, just as if this is how you can live. This is the breath of for your soul. So this little child inside me that talked to my parents, I want to find my husband myself. I will write letter to him. So one day I saw. A man in a magazine, and he looks very nice, and、uh, and his art is really beautiful. When I see some art is really good, I feel that the instincts tell me I want to reach out. I want to know him and、uh, to know his art more. Then I just decide to write a letter to him, so he's my husband now. <laughs> When we come over here,、um, it's a little bit the first driving to work together, because the artist's ego, that is natural, your ambition and his ambition, and it's it's very natural and how you work out, and I think. There's something you have to believe is bigger than artist ego. That your love is bigger, so you're willing to sit down and talk to work out. It's it's interesting, and we always feel like、uh, a little bit of tension of、uh, feel、um, competitive, you know. And、uh, on another hand, it's good to、um, push each other to work a little bit more hard. And he said, you know. I really want to try to respect,、uh, you know, our ambition from a woman, and、um, I think that's wonderful that、uh, a woman's right to be recognized and、uh, in this society now. And、uh, basically, I think he's a great man to understand in that, you know. I practice my strong determination. It's the first year of middle school. I had to get up very early in the morning, about two o'clock, and we weave blankets on a huge machine. The noise is unbelievable. It's like you can feel the noise in the air. It shakes your bones. It's bearable compared to the fear that cast over me, knowing that. The Girls could be killed by the flying shadow. Sometimes the shadow could just flying out the machine, and、uh, injures people, even kill. I talked to my parents. I said that is so scary. My father said this is the only way we can make a living, and the shadow running back forth is making every piece of rice. And I feel like.、Uh, I'm a hero. I feel like I'm supporting the family. So, then after three hours in the room with this huge machine, bonding three three hours, I work briefly to the school about two hours, walk through two mountains, and I think the moment I step into the classroom, I feel like I'm walk into the paradise of a. Dream making workshop. When I go to the school, I my hair always have a white fluffy cotton on my hair because the three hours in the、uh, weaving blanket, the cotton flying in the air, the cotton stress is like a snow flavor <laughs> on my hair. So this is like a, a, a crown. Clearly, identify me is the poorest in the poors, and、uh, that make me feel like I'm different, but I'm the same. I'm just one of the students want to be educated. It's about a couple years later. My parents、um, told me they said、uh, we really don't have money and.、Uh, 
we will try to wear out your determination by uh, making you get up very early. And uh, when you really get tired, then you will say, I will give up school. I don't like to go to school. I'm sleepy. I'm going to quit. But they had no idea. I uh, so determined want to go to school and uh, wanted this education. It's, it's hard enough for two artists to live together anyway. Because there's always this uh, conflict of ideas or you should do it this way or that way, you know. And that, that's one tension that we handle pretty well. But when you have two little babies, it's, it's the situation of, here, you hold the baby, I'll sculpt. Okay, now I'll hold the baby, you sculpt. Yeah, I always <laughs> say we need to uh, change this uh, traditional idea, like women have to take care of babies at home. <laughs> I say I want equal rights. How long I take your babies and uh, how long you're doing art and uh, I should have the right to do. Yeah. It's really art. having four <laughs> babies because I think art, artists are children anyway. You know, <laughs> they have these very important things that they want to do, and uh, you you have this incredible attachment to an artwork that is developing. You know, and uh, you want to spend time with that, but you have the demands of two little real babies they need to be fed and played with cared for and then you have another little baby that wants to do their play with their toys you yeah. know so it, it can be hard juggling all of that energy but, but sometimes the positive part is babies is such an inspiration for us it's bring out the best part of us yeah that we always feel that the baby's innocence and their childlike way to play, it just can free us to be more limitless way of thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the cliche that love will find a way is, yeah. is, is very, very true. Uh, yeah. And we live a very unscheduled life. Nobody has to get up at a particular time and go yeah. to work. So. Uh, one of us will stay up all night working and then kind of uh, cozy with the kids the next day while the other person sneaks away to work on their project. And you just work when you can, yeah. as you can. Yeah, and sometimes I can say, Bill, I have an idea in my mind and I work on it. And I can just walking around, it looks like don't do anything and just work inside. And he can indulge me, let me work on what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. It's very abstract, but uh, it's wonderful to have uh, the other artist that he is really knowing art and knowing the process of how to deliver the art into a visual form. I like to say something about how I get this blank book commission. That is really big commission, and for me, I'm so young and I'm for long experience. I'm not just. Um, ready for this kind of commission in child those at the moment. So um, uh, only one hour to go and he said, um, hi honey, uh, you have to get ready for uh, the meeting. Uh, would you prepare your dress, your silk dress? And, um, and we got to go in one hour. And uh, he said, I have my mechanic already, already the bamboo is in the car and everything. He just said to go. And I said to myself, I said, uh, I'm not a fashion model. I don't care about the silk dress. I feel this moment, I want to sh do some art about the bamboo. And um, I just feel like I must do it. And I feel like this bamboo ragtime musician, he's doing art wins ago and spontaneously and uh, he fits for to what he's feeling. His emotion, everything, it was touching me. So I have this image inside me already about the way how he play. He must close eyes and he lean back and uh, the hands, the vision of a melody. So I decided to do that clay. And uh, in half hour, Bill coming. Are you ready with your silk dress? I said, no silk dress. I'm going to wear this murder worker dress. Take a look at my art. Do you like or not? And he said, oh, 
This is the one, honey. This is the one. I said, aren't you feeling jealous? That's something better than you. You think they are going to want the commission, maybe? He said, honey, art are higher than anything. Anyone, anything that she looks at, it's as if an actress studying the role, uh, studies the life of, of some character that she's about to become. Ai Chu has this ability to, to internalize and to become her subject. And then this power of em empathy becomes her power of intention to create that in the physical plane. Voice of a mother call to all children who suffer the pain of war. You are all babies once. And forever babies of your own mother, our children of all age come back home Children's life is the work for peace. When winds of death cast tears, cast fears on all you beloved, in tears we hear the bloody news each morning of, after a long night yearning for peace. Kneeling sleepless, pulled by the strings of a heart that resonate with every baby cry, that first cry, last cry, and the dying cry, Mama, tone up and tone down, giving birth, then to be given death. A destroyed birth called tree should be in the heart of a mother's prey. Let's all come home, all our children. We were all babies once with pure souls thinking love. Let's wash away the dusty of hatred with tears of humanity. Uncover our eyes. Every bump plants seeds of endless hate. Our babies, babies tender hearts cry from the future to our ears. Let the heart of mama speak be seeking, beseeching forgiveness, calling for love once again. Ever let's forgive, ever let be forgiven. A mother, I too. So this is always my strive in my art, in my poem, to um, express that the art is like a crystal medium that uh, connect people and uh, you see what is inside you really matters that uh, help others to feel better and uh, to help others to see what is real matters. And uh, so when you connect with people through art and you rise with each other and you feel you are not alone. So I think my art basically is to try to express the emotion and the relationship between humans and um, uh, what is really important about life. The way that you work is so different from me though. I mean, I Chu will spend days just meditating, yeah. developing. It's as if she's sculpting it in her brain, what she's going to do. And then comes the point where it's all done up here. She just has to create it in a physical form. I'm completely the other way. I'm very Dionysian. I will, I'll, uh, uh, I won't know what I want to do. So I'll grab a piece of wax 
and I'll start sculpting the clay. And I will let the material tell me what I want to do. I'll let the, you know, the ideas develop. I have to be in the studio playing with stuff. And then out of the stuff comes my, my ideas for sculpture. Hers is much more premeditated, you know. And it makes you a first degree sculptor. <laughs> I think art sometimes the form of the art is influenced by your culture. That is um, that is very um, common. It's understandable. The root of where you grew up, the root of the culture, is the nurturing for your soul. That we have the universal feeling towards to each other, no matter wherever you are in the whole earth. So if we want to find the, the resonance between human beings, there's only one thing is saying is we all have a human heart that feels, feels happy, sad, and this is this feeling connect all of us together so that we can see each other as another, another human being that want to reach out, to communicate, and the outside of this skin or the character of your face is the Asian style looking or American or European does not really matter. I may not be the greatest, but I count myself as one of the missionaries. I have left myself from all the cold eyes. Looking down on my poverty, not simply by joining the LA and the powerful and the rich, but by understanding that I'm as good as anyone, I'm God's child just as they, like wise anyone is as good as me. 
I must not look down on others, rich or poor. Now, since I was there once and suffering this pain of perfect shame, I cannot fully enjoy my own freedom. I cannot just be totally free if I know that others still suffer. What I seek is a path where we learn we are all equal in spirit. That then we give this same respect for other souls. It is within our reach to do this if we willing only just grasp the other soul. Within the grasp of souls, we are savers on both ends. In the grasp of hands, we see equality, equal strength of determination, determination for human freedom. And I know I'm just a single artist and I'm like a single saint. I'm not that powerful. I may be just a drop of water, but if we can find something together, we all work on it, then that is the power. In no matter what you do, be you, be you, be you, be you, beautiful you, just be you. I don't care what you are To me you are a shining star Or you wouldn't be here at all Hanging on this real and rolling ball So be I'm just a single artist and I'm like a single saint. I'm not that powerful. I may be just a drop of water, but if we can find something together, we all work on it, then that is power. <laughs>